But when the Holy Spirit fills you, you will have the controlling. Listen, he will have the controlling interests of your life. And let me tell you what that is. It is controlled by consent. I surrender all. I surrender all. Uh, it's a choice. Now let's let's just pause for a moment because I, I want to uh, I want to make a a critical distinction. Being filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that I had more of the Spirit. It means that the Spirit has more of me. It, it doesn't happen all at once. <laughs> okay. It doesn't happen all at once any more than when you drink, you get drunk all at once. <laughs> Being filled with the Spirit happens when you continually choose to live under that influence. Are you listening to me? One day at a time, sweet Jesus. And then there's the issue of cooperation. Are you cooperating with the Spirit of God? Is your life in collaboration and cooperation with God's will for your life? Or are you living under your own will and under by us and being guided by your own desires and, and, and perhaps maybe you haven't really, look, look, even, even if you're sick, okay? I'm not, I don't want to be cold about this, but the Bible says if you're sick, call upon the elders of the church. I know what meant, well, I got this. See, I believe that every Christian is filled with the Spirit. Listen to this. From the moment of new birth, every Christian I believe it because the Bible says so. Amen? Every Christian has a spirit at that new birth. And since the Holy Spirit indwells us from that moment that we're saved, it only makes sense that new believers are filled with the same spirit. Which is why new believers often have so much joy and they, want, they, they seem to desire to walk so much more closely to the Lord than most of us. My goodness, the number of excuses that are made anymore. They're nothing new, by the way. It just seems to be more in number. And here's the thing. Someone who was born again, when they came, that first moment that you were saved, that new nature, come on, that new nature that overwhelmed them, that overtook them, and suddenly there's a whole new person. I, I was, I was blind. Now I see. I once was in dark. I'm, I'm, I'm walking in the light. For them, it was a natural thing to do. And for some of us, most of us, we seem to struggle with it. Why? So then, the main issue is one of cooperation. Here it is. Am I going to cooperate with the Holy Spirit? And am I going to let him lead me, or am I going to keep on trying to do things my own way? So many of us struggle with precisely that very point. We fight the Lord because we want to do things our way. And then God says, okay, we can do it your way for a while. That's okay. We'll do that. But it's not going to work. But we can do this. In that sense, you could say, if we won't cooperate with God, okay. if we won't cooperate with God, I'm going to shock you right now, then he'll cooperate with us. If you won't cooperate with God, he will cooperate with you. He'll let you have the things that you ask for. You ever hear that? Hey, you better be, happy, be careful what you pray for. He'll cooperate with us by letting us do things at our own strength. Letting us do things without assistance. Letting us do things without 
without any help. Letting us do things by our own will. But when we fail and we cry out to the Lord, he says, are you now willing to cooperate with me? And then it comes to this. A contact issue. F.B. Myers wrote this about the Spirit's filling. He said this. Most people think of the Spirit as an influence that fill us, like filling a gas tank. And so we run out of the Spirit and God fills us again. <coughs> but that's not the best way to use it. Think about the elevated trains that, in many, that are in many large cities today. Those trains run on three rails. Two are for the wheels, one is for the electricity. The electricity is always there, but the train doesn't move unless there is a contact with that third rail. Touch that rail and the train moves. Pull away from that rail and it stops. Similarly, we who are looking at the third person of the Trinity, if we're not connected with him, you see, the third rail is like the Holy Spirit. Power is always there. And unlike your local utility, like what happened yesterday and over the last few days, there's never a power outage. There's never a power shortage. There's never a brownout in regards to the Holy Ghost. All the power all the time. But sometimes we live our life out of contact with His power. And that happens. Our lives simply stop working the way God intended it. And here's my final definition of being filled with the Holy Spirit. It is that state in which the Holy Spirit is free to do all that he came into my life to do. Or he came into the life of the church to accomplish. You have a spirit. You have, some, you have, the, uh, you have your measure of faith. You have your measure of the spirit. The spirit, the spirit. We all get together in the unity of faith because there's one spirit. When we're talking about the Spirit of God. The key word here is state. In this state in which the Holy Spirit is free to do all that he came to do in my life. The state. That filling of the Spirit is not primarily an emotional experience. And it's certainly not. The reason, listen, it's certainly not reserved for a few super Christians. It's nothing more. What, oh, this is going to mess you up. It is nothing more than normal Christian life when the Holy Spirit is in control. That's normal. That's that new nature. That new nature. I once was lost, not found. I was dead, but now I'm alive in Christ. It's no longer I that live, but it's Christ that lives in me. Amen? That is why the command is in the present tense. This is the command of God. We are continually being controlled by the Spirit, cooperating with the Spirit, and we're continually in contact with that same Spirit. This is God's moment-by-moment -moment provision for vitality, for strength, for courage, for boldness, for victory, for that abundant life that He's promised to us. It's for you. It's a command, and it's God's plan for your life. Now, I want to close with this thought. God, God is ready. God is willing. God is able to fill you right now. He's more willing to fill you. Listen to me. He is more willing to fill you than you are to be filled. I got two heads now. The rest of you need to get honest. God's more willing to fill you than you are willing to be filled. If for some reason that you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, it's not because God was reluctant. It's not because God wasn't willing. It wasn't because God didn't want to. It's because we were not willing. We don't have to beg God to do what he's already promised he would do. He is, listen, 
Watch this. God is the one who's right. He's pleading with you right now. He's begging.